This is the president. Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies. And today, I'm going to tell you about the 20 most graphic movies you can currently catch on Netflix. When I see So welcome if you're new to the channel, but this is the second time I've done a video on this topic, meaning there is a previous 20 that I did about a year and a half ago. I'll put a link to that in the description below. And because of that, there are some movies like Polar that did not make this list because they're in the other one, but go check it out when you're done with this one, even though not all of those movies are still on Netflix. And below each title, I'll be indicating what the intensity level is of the sex, blood, and bullets with each of the movies that we're talking about. And despite featuring everything that this list is about in large quantities, The Last Days of American Crime barely squeaks onto this list all the way at the back at number 20. Now this is a Netflix original movie that came out within the last year and it is wild. It is packed with sex, blood, and bullets, but there is a lot missing from it as well. They packed a lot of style in, a lot of graphic material, and an interesting concept, and I'll even dare to say a couple of interesting characters, but the glue that binds all of that stuff together that is kind of essential for a really good movie is really lacking here. And this is based on a graphic novel series by the same name, and the basic breakdown is that this takes place in the near future. Crime has just run amok all over the country, and there is a new technology about to be released that is essentially a signal that causes you to stop breaking the law, essentially. It basically paralyzes you. And before that goes live across the whole country, this group of criminals is trying to pull off one last heist. So if you're into all of the other things that I described, the graphic material, the heist nature of it, the, the concept, the costumes, the performances, just kind of how off the wall it is, then definitely check it out. Just don't expect it to, again, be glued together the way a really good movie would. My number 19 pick is easily the weirdest one on the list and also features some of the biggest stars on this entire list with Keanu Reeves and Ana de Armas in Eli Roth's Knock Knock. Now, not only is this a remake, it is an Eli Roth remake, and Eli Roth has a very specific brand of horror. His most famous movie that he actually directed is Hostel. This one is weirder and darker and not really as good, but still, fans of Eli Roth do dig his vibe because it is so different and so kind of weird. But in this movie, a family man played by Keanu Reeves answers his front door and there are a couple of babes soaked in rainwater that need to come in and dry off. Classic setup, classic story, and it just goes in the most twisted direction imaginable. If you like really twisted horror movies, no matter how good or bad they are, this is gonna be a good pick for you. Now quite possibly the most brutal and maybe even the most upsetting movie on this list, at least in the top three on this list, is also a Netflix original movie from France. It's called Rogue City. I believe in some regions it's also called Bronx. I think that maybe just doesn't quite make sense here in the US, but this is a crime movie, but it does circle around an elite unit of cops. If you liked the show The Shield, then this movie is gonna be for you. Even if you don't watch things with subtitles, watch the dub version of this, you're gonna love it. It is that type of thing. It feels almost like a spinoff of The Shield at times, but it is brutal. It is graphic. It is really intense, but very much like The Last Days of American Crime, the glue that holds it together is not really working here because so much is going on. It's got this big sort of epic crime drama, kind of like a mob movie with a bunch of moving parts and a bunch of characters and a bunch of double crossing and people getting taken out and whacked or whatever you call it in France. It's happening a lot in this movie and it's almost too much but it's got a slick look to it. It's almost like a Michael Mann kind of movie, except it's just not nearly as good as something directed by the guy that did Heat. But fans of that genre should check this out just with the right expectations. Okay, I've got another Netflix original from France, and then we are done with foreign language movies on this list. However, all the ones on this list do have dubbing, and the dubbing is quite good. Now, with barely any bullets or blood, Budapest is stunning. 
stacked with sexual content. This is about a couple of guys who quit their day jobs in order to start a bachelor party service where they take groups of men into Budapest to party for the weekend for bachelor parties. Now honestly, while watching it, I kind of kept waiting for the other shoe to drop. I kept waiting for some sort of crime element to come into play because they're doing some shady business across borders and they're in some shady places in this movie. But it really is just about a couple of guys who quit their job and start this bachelor party business. But the sexual content in this movie is a wild. I mean, it doesn't stop, it keeps going, and it's really funny. However, However, I do need to explain that I think there's like a cultural thing here where one of the main characters is one of the biggest assholes I've ever seen in a movie and it's not gonna work for everybody but if you get through that and you find it funny or it doesn't bother you then this is just a really funny movie kind of in the vein of The Hangover just again not quite as good but hang in there with me we got better stuff coming up on this list. Now one of the most violent and sex filled movies Jason Statham has ever done was actually just recently added to Netflix is called Parker. Now in this he plays a criminal who's out for revenge for some guys that screwed him over. Kind of a classic setup. In fact, it's almost a ripoff of a movie I love from the 60s called Point Blank, which they later did a remake of with Mel Gibson called Payback. And then Parker's based on a book that is essentially the same story. And while it's not as good as either of those two, it is a pretty good rated R Jason Statham movie. Jennifer Lopez is in it as well. And while they definitely put her in here to sort of trick people into thinking they were gonna see her naked in the trailers. She's not, but she is very interesting in her character. I did not expect her to be such an interesting character. She basically plays this real estate agent who's had enough and decides she wants to have some fun and kind of throws herself into the middle of this heist situation with this Parker character. And she's got kind of this wild, fun personality about it too. I really enjoyed that aspect in a way I didn't expect to. And obviously it's fun to see Jason Statham kick people's teeth in, but it's even better when it's rated R and there's the appropriate amount of blood and it just works better. And it's not always the case. He's such a big star. They tend to try to go PG-13 with his movies. This is one of the better rated R ones. I had fun with it, even if it is a little too much by the book for my taste. Now, you would expect a movie about the men who first monetized porn on the internet to be filled with sex. And it is. But there's a surprising amount of violence in Middlemen. Now this movie is, I think, about 10 years, probably a little more than 10 years old now, but stacked cast, all great actors, Giovanni Ribisi, Luke Wilson, Gabriel Macht, James Caan, Terry Crews is in it, Kelsey Grammer, Robert Forster. It's just, it's got an incredible cast to it. And it's not just about the first time porn was available on the internet. It's about the first people that created e-commerce, they monetized things and allowed people to spend money on the internet and ultimately that changed the world but then this story gets really sort of muddled up with crime and it's very interesting. Got kind of a Wolf of Wall Street type of a thing going on if you like things like that. This movie's kind of a party and it does have some other things going on that make it more than that, that make it more interesting. Well, my next pick is kind of an obvious one. I think some of you are gonna be surprised to see how far back on the list I put Machete Kills. Now, Robert Rodriguez is one of my favorite directors. I love most of what he does. He's just, he's brilliant and at making movies entertaining. However, I find the Machete movies to sort of reach a little bit too much and they self-parody his work a little bit too much for my taste, but still, a fun time at the movies. I mean, Danny Trejo is one of my favorite actors. I don't know if you can call him a character actor because he's almost the same character all the time, but it's one of the best characters ever, and Machete is one of his best characters. There's also just fun cameos from all sorts of people that are there to have fun, and that's really all this movie's trying to do is just have a good time with some bonker shit, and I love it. I just think Sin City, Desperado, some of Rodriguez's other movies are just so much better than this one when this one could have been really, really killer. They almost had too much fun with it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Now my number 13 pick is a hidden gem with a really great throwback vibe. It's called The Ghost Who Walks. This feels like something straight out of the 70s. Even the jacket the guy's wearing is from the 70s, but it's about a guy who gets released from prison and is trying to tie up loose ends in his life and the clock is ticking. There's something happening that he's sort of racing against. So it's kind of a one crazy night type of a movie. 
It does take place at Christmas, but in no way is this any type of a Christmas movie. In fact, the holiday season really just sort of contrasts some of the violence and sexual content that does occur in this movie. This one's gritty, it's got this sort of seedy underbelly element, but it's not necessarily off-putting either. I don't think this is gonna be inaccessible for too many people. I love it because I do love movies from the 70s that this is akin to. If that's not already something you've developed a flavor for, I could see where this one maybe seems a little too simple or not quite finished to you. Now, another hidden gem that is packed with sex, blood, bullets, and quite a few kicks to the head is The Debt Collector. Now, this stars one of my favorite action stars, Scott Adkins. He is fantastic. I've recommended quite a few of his movies. While he does make a lot of movies, they're not all bangers, but this is one that is exceptional. Now, this is also done for fairly little money, but that is what I love about this movie. Not the fact that it looks low budget, the fact that it is low budget, and they had some amazing fight sequences in it with a lot of damage and destruction to some property. And then, not only is Scott Atkins really good in this, but his co-star, Louis Mandalore, is fantastic. Like, I remember seeing this guy on sitcoms when I was a kid, and he's sort of turned into this really dynamic actor. I've seen him in quite a few of the Scott Atkins movies. He's always got a different accent, a different character. I love his character in this one. Scott Atkins' character is great in this one. They have fantastic chemistry, so much so that they actually made a sequel that just came out this past year. It is also included on Netflix. I recommend them both. I think the sexual content was a little bit lighter in the sequel though, which is why the original makes this list. And then we will round out my bottom 10 with what I consider to be a really underappreciated Netflix original action movie, Six Underground. Now, I understand there's a lot of dumb things in this movie. In fact, the overall concept is kind of dumb. The delivery can be a little dumb. However, there is a style and a sheen and a gloss and an oversaturation and a constantly moving camera that can be a little bit irritating in every Michael Bay movie. This one's no exception. And I kind of like it more than some of the other things he's done because it's so weird and so wild. And it does go kind of hard in the paint on the rated R content as well. He's currently so famous for his PG-13 movies like the Transformers movies that I love seeing him have a little more fun with some rated R content. Six Underground is a great example of that. While it is not a great movie, it is a fun watch and it exemplifies everything we're talking about here on this list. You see that? Sorry for yelling. So maybe you're watching this video in the future, or maybe you're watching it in a different country, or maybe you watch my other video and you want to watch one of the movies off that and it's not on Netflix anymore. You can access all the movies I'm talking about using the right kind of VPN service and today's sponsor CyberGhost VPN is that type of VPN service. All VPNs keep your web browsing safe, secure, some do a better job than others and CyberGhost is one of the better, more secure VPNs out there. They keep no logs, they do all the best practices but on top of that they have specialized servers targeted at specific streaming services in different countries and then you can switch between those servers seamlessly with the click of a button immediately unlocking vast new libraries of movies and shows available in an array of different countries. And no, they're not foreign language things or anything like that. They're big blockbuster American movies that are available overseas and not available here sometimes, as well as just other more interesting things you might not ever discover if you didn't unlock them using CyberGhost. CyberGhost VPN is super easy to use and they have a 45 day money back guarantee. So if you sign up for it and you find that you're not making good use of it, you can cancel it for a full refund. They have great 24 seven customer support. So they're there to help you set it up on multiple devices. Speaking of devices, you can use it on up to seven devices at the same time. And it's all the different types of devices you use. Right now, my viewers can pay as low as $2.19 a month that's almost down to $2 a month to unlock vast new libraries of movies. One movie rental is gonna cost you four or five bucks. $2.19 a month is a hell of a deal. I highly recommend it. I've used it for well over a year now. 
and I have no plans to cancel it anytime soon, but let's go ahead and move on with the rest of this list. Now, despite featuring zero, and I mean zero bullets, and having been panned by critics in the early 2000s, Alexander manages to squeak onto my top 10. This is directed by Oliver Stone, who has done quite a few I want to say historical movies, even though he does change things historically for some weird reason, but Alexander is a beautiful movie, really stunning, and is a very epic telling of the Alexander saga. There's a lot going on in this movie. Anybody that's into any kind of historical stuff, hell, even if you're just sort of missing Game of Thrones, this could be a good movie to watch. There's quite a bit of sexual content in it for the type of movie that it is, but this was a very violent time in history and this movie does showcase that. It's also a good performance from Colin Farrell. It's not my favorite of his by any means, but he does do a good job here as well as some other people like Rosario Dawson and Angelina Jolie. It's maybe a little over long and a little talky, but you know what? So was Game of Thrones. Okay, so the last Netflix original movie to be featured on this list is also the newest. It's called I Care A Lot. Speaking of Game of Thrones, this stars Peter Dinklage and Roseman Pike in a really sort of twisted movie that I liked a lot. It just didn't quite work for me because of one thing, and that is the fact that Roseman Pike's character is one of the biggest pieces of I've ever seen in a movie. Forget about the guy from Budapest. She is ripping off elderly people and essentially siphoning all of their wealth off of them. It is horrendous. It's awful. They kind of show you how it's done, which is pretty terrible. And then as the movie progressed, things get really kind of wild and twisted. This went in a direction I was not expecting. Peter Dinklage plays a really interesting character. I loved him in this movie. But... I did not care what happened to Roseman Pike's character because she is such an awful human being that it didn't work for me. I mean, it was an interesting movie. It looks great. It's a cool story, cool characters, all of that. But I think there were moments where I was supposed to be worried for her life and could not have cared less. But that also kind of speaks to the movie. Roseman Pike does a very good job of playing this character really well, where she is kind of charming, but also just like scum of the earth. It, that worked for me. Her performance did, but the storytelling and what they kind of wanted me to think and feel, I don't think quite worked out for me. But still, one of the cooler Netflix originals I've seen in recent memory. With some form of nudity, or at least partial nudity, every 250 seconds or so, Striptease is stuffed with the most sexual content on this list. But there's also a surprising amount of bullets in this movie, and an even more surprising amount of laughs. Most of those are coming from Burt Reynolds. Because this movie is a comedy, now it does deal with some heavy themes, but it features some really elaborate strip teases, more so than anything I've ever seen in a strip club. Demi Moore got into incredible shape for this movie. I mean, it's like a kind of outrageous shape for this movie. Burt Reynolds is absolutely hilarious in this movie as this sort of like scummy congressman. It's really great stuff from him. Robert Patrick plays a scumbag in a role you normally don't see him in. He does a great job. So there are some good laughs, even if the overall concept is a little dopey and it's a little forced. I mean, let's admit this was an excuse to put butts in seats just so you could maybe see, I say maybe see Demi Moore naked. She's naked in this movie quite a bit, as well as some other people. But there's a crime element here. I mean, there's more meat on the bone than you would expect with this one. It makes for a fun watch, especially if you're gonna get a kick out of seeing Burt Reynolds walk around in cowboy boots covered in, I, just let's leave it, we'll just leave it there. Another recently released hidden gem is What Keeps You Alive. This is your classic, somebody's chasing me through the woods, run for your life type of a setup. And what's interesting about this one is it's about a lesbian couple on a vacation. They're out in the wilderness, something goes wrong. And I even remember when I first talked about this movie here on the channel, I mentioned that they were lesbians. And, and of course, someone had to complain in the comments as to why I had to point out that they were lesbians because it's irrelevant. No, it's not. It's very relevant to the story. It's a major part of it. It is what the story revolves around, and it's what makes it more interesting than any other sort of run-of-the-mill, run-through-the-woods type of a movie. There's something going on that makes this movie work, whereas I probably wouldn't have been interested in it otherwise, because I've seen it a dozen times, and the lesbian angle is part of it. Yes, there's some sexual content mixed in, but there's quite a bit of blood. This is kind of a wild, trippy movie at times, too. 
If it looks like your kind of thing, it definitely is. If you typically don't go for movies like this, this one's kind of extreme and unusually weird for this type of movie, so it's probably not gonna be for you. Now I do need to warn you that much of, not all, but much of the sexual content in my next pick is of sexual assault. Now that is the only type of, I guess, trigger warning that I believe in. Not because I don't think people should see that type of content in film, but because anyone who's the victim of sexual assault doesn't want to be surprised by it in a movie that I recommend. So I try to be careful with that, but David Fincher's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is another one that I consider to be criminally underrated. Now, I'm aware that there is an original series starring Numi Rapace, and they're very good. They are very good movies. And I'm also aware that David Fincher's version, while it is just an American remake, is not really critically acclaimed the way some of his other movies are. However, it is still a really well done movie. It's definitely one of David Fincher's drearier movies. I mean, it's up there in Seven territory. Just in terms of how gloomy and dark the movie is, if you like things like that, David Fincher has this amazing eye for it where he films this really dark, moody stuff that also looks just absolutely beautiful. I mean, the cinematography, as dark and gloomy as it is in this movie, is stunning. By no means is it my favorite David Fincher movie, but I think it is underappreciated because of the weird reviews that it got, which are somewhat understandable, but still just a fantastic serial killer movie. Now, before directing The Joker, but after directing The Hangover series, Todd Phillips did a little arms dealer movie with Jonah Hill and Miles Teller called War Dogs. Now, I didn't have much expectations for this. There's a movie with Nicolas Cage called Lore of War that I think is just a, a brilliant movie about arms dealers. So anything that's close to Lord of War is naturally gonna draw a comparison from me and I think War Dogs comes damn close to being just as good of a movie. I would not have expected that, especially coming from the director of The Hangover. Not that that movie's not well directed, but it's just a very different type of storytelling. And after seeing War Dogs back when it came out, I was like, oh, no, this guy can definitely do the Joker movie. I didn't know if he was gonna be able to do it, but because he did such a good job with this crime movie that is also really fun and exciting, again, kind of like Wolf of Wall Street, I knew he was gonna be able to do it. This is a really great, fun, entertaining movie that does juggle some pretty heavy concepts as well, but is ultimately really well-rounded. More bullets than anything else on this list for sure. Decent amount of blood, and these guys are you know, party animals, so there's a decent amount of sexual content here as well. Now, a really beautiful movie about some people doing really awful things is Nocturnal Animals. This is another somewhat hidden gem. Didn't get a whole ton of buzz when it came out. This is actually directed by fashion designer Tom Ford. He is brilliant behind the camera. I wish I could see more movies from him. I don't really care about his clothes because I'm not rolling in dough like that, but I'd love to see him directing more movies like this. It's really, really great. And not just because it has some incredible actors in it, which it does. It's got a beautiful look to it, really crisp, simple cinematography, but also a really compelling story that I'm not gonna explain here, but it's kind of like two parallel stories running at once. One of them's real, one of them may or may not be, and you sort of discover a lot about the first one by exploring the other one. Very interesting stuff. Bonkers opening title sequence. Loads of nudity in the opening title sequence. I'm not gonna tell you what it's like, I'm just gonna tell you it's really weird. If you don't like really weird stuff, don't watch this movie and certainly don't watch the opening title sequence. The only PG-13 movie to make this list features a shocking amount of sex, blood, and bullets, and that's Casino Royale. This is Daniel Craig's first crack at a Bond movie. I loved this one when it came out. One of the cool things about this one is it's technically a remake of another Bond movie called Casino Royale, which is easily sort of the weirdest, cheesiest, most like a comedy Bond movie ever made. You can't shoot me. I, uh, uh... I, uh, I have a very low threshold of death. Uh, my, my doctor says I can't have bullets enter my body at any time. And while that does have sort of a cult following, it does not mesh with the rest of the Bond series. And this was a fantastic introduction of Daniel Craig as Bond. He's more athletic than previous Bonds. And you can immediately tell from the opening sort of 15 to 20 minutes that 
Casino Royale and the other Daniel Craig Bond movies to follow were going to look and feel different. This did a great job of setting up the tone. It's one of the best. I happen to think Skyfall is maybe the best James Bond movie ever made. This is the second best Daniel Craig one for sure. It's a personal favorite of mine for a long time. I particularly love the pace of this one. There's some really intense action sequences, but then this casino game that takes place in the middle, while there is some action that occurs during it, it is sort of a long period where the movie slows down and then it picks back up again. It's just got a really nice structure to it that's different from a lot of other Bond movies and I love it for that. I love the bad guy in this one. Eva Green plays a great Bond girl that's got a lot more going on than a lot of prior Bond girls had going on. And this one's also not muddled up with a bunch of gadgets and stuff. That, that stuff is fun in Bond movies, but it was cool to see one that was a little bit grittier, a little more analog and less technically proficient, I guess. I know I said I would retire this next pick in a recent video, and I meant it when I said it, but that was before I knew I was gonna do a Sex, Blood, and Bullets 2. And coming in at number two on this list, not only is it the second best movie on this list, it has the best balance of Sex, Blood, and Bullets out of anything on this list. I'm talking about The Guest. Now, while I did want to retire it, I still love talking about this movie because every time I do, the comments section fills up with people who had never seen it, never heard of it, who watched it, and came back to the video just to let me know how much they liked it. It's my favorite part about doing this on YouTube is introducing people to something really cool that they never would have seen otherwise, and The Guest is a great example of that. Dan Stevens plays a soldier who goes to stay with a friend of a family who supposedly died in action and things are not what they seem and boy does this movie take a really long time getting into it but boy is it well worth the wait and it's not a terrible wait you spend that time sort of hanging out with Dan Stevens getting to know sort of what is going on with him because something isn't right but he's really charming and interesting to watch along the way make him in row from it follows has a really fantastic role in this as well and the intensity of this one only ramps up it starts off almost a little too dull and then just does not stop ramping up till you get to the end. It's fantastic stuff. If you've ever liked my recommendations, this is a top tier one. Make sure you watch it soon. Obviously number one is easily the best movie on this list, but it's also easily one of the best movies on Netflix right now. And it has enough blood and bullets to make up for the sparse yet severe sexual content in Training Day. This is the movie where Denzel Washington finally won an Academy Award for Best Actor. And while he's always great and everything, I remember back when this came out, I didn't think it was necessarily his best. However, having watched this many times over the years, there is some subtlety to this really kind of over the top wild character that he created that is really amazing. And Ethan Hawke plays off of that perfectly. I mean, Denzel Washington is the star of the show. His character really stands out. But the story is more about Ethan Hawke and his character arc, so you do have to follow him. And while he doesn't need to stand out as much as Denzel Washington, he has to play off of him the right amount. This movie's got a beautiful look to it. I mean, you're on rainy streets of Los Angeles and it's gray for a lot of the movie, yet, it just looks really, really good. It's really surprising. This is from director Antoine Fuqua, who went on to do a bunch of big movies. This, to this day, I think is still his best movie. It was his first big feature. It's a modern American crime masterpiece, in my opinion. And not only is it just a good crime movie, there's a really interesting plot that develops with some twists and turns that this type of movie isn't usually filled with and I love it for that. It's highly entertaining and also fairly grounded and realistic. It's just this really well, well balanced crime movie. It's my type of thing. It's one of my all time favorites. Let me know in the comment which movies you are most looking forward to watching. Also help me thank the Patreon supporters down in the comments below. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, there is a link in the description. There is also a link to become a channel member right here on YouTube. You can support the channel either way, but channel members get access to exclusive videos. Patreon supporters have some other benefits. 
follow the links, see which one's the right fit for you. If you're not in a position to support the channel monetarily, likes, comments, and shares, clicking that share button and sharing this video with somebody that you think might appreciate it is always a great way to help support the channel as well. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for watching Sex, Blood, and Bullets 2, and you will see me on the next one.